In this episode of Retro Now, I'm going to show you how you can service a Commodore dataset. In the last episode of Retro Now, I did a bit of an unboxing, and one of the items I unboxed in that video was this Commodore dataset. Now, despite the fact that it looks in immaculate condition and doesn't appear to have ever been used before, unfortunately, when I tested it with the only tape that I have, the tape failed to load successfully. Now that could well be down to the fact that the tape itself is faulty, but I think given the fact that this unit is probably somewhere between 30 and 35 years old, it's long overdue a service. In this episode of Retro Now, I'm going to show you how you can service a Commodore dataset by changing the drive belts, a new set of which I have here and have purchased off eBay for a few pounds, and by realigning the tape heads. Okay, so before I open this up and uh, service this uh, drive, uh, I'm going to just try and tape one more time. Uh, so as I say, this is the only program I've got, it's called Cheese, and uh, it's a graphics program that came with the Neos mouse that I've got. Uh, but the last time I tried this it did go through about halfway through it and then crashed or failed to load. Okay so this is actually worse than last time because I'm getting uh, corruption in the, the name of the file it's finding. Uh, this doesn't look very good at all. It's uh, yeah, probably not worth going much further with this. Uh, that looks not like it should be. Uh, so we've really got a bit of a problem here that we need to look at. Uh, if I take a look at the tape going round, it seems to be going round okay. Um, but maybe I'll uh, just stop it. Uh, and we'll try rewinding the tape. Sometimes that helps if you rewind the tape and fast forward it through a couple of times, it just tightens the tape up on the uh, the reels of tape on, on, on the cassette and uh, then thing uh, often fixes load errors. So just rewind it to the beginning and then we'll fast forward. It. Okay, so this doesn't look very good. So if I, as I fast forwarding it now, it looks like it's, it's definitely not going at the speed it should be. Uh, I suspect that's the drive belt slipping. So uh, that certainly uh, shows us that this, this uh, drive needs to be serviced. Uh, yeah, that's not looking very good at all. So let's stop it there and rewind it back to the beginning. And rewind works perfectly well. It's just a fast forward. Okay, so let's start by taking the back off the, uh, the tape drive. Uh, it's just got four screws here that we need to undo. Uh, they're straightforward uh, crosshead screws, nothing special about them, they're not uh, uh, locking screws of any kind, so we just need to slacken those off, take them off. And I'm just done doing them all the way out then. Uh, the last one here, and that should be, that should be out. I should just be able to lift the back off nice and easily. And then just carefully uh, drop those screws out and put them to one side. And there we can see the uh, the inside of the tape drive, or the back, back of the tape drive where we've got the uh, tape mechanism uh, the lid looks nice and clean on the inside there so it does and, and in fact everything looks all nice and clean on here uh, if we look at the drive belt it does look a tiny bit loose not too bad um, and I think to get this off I need to get this plate out of the way uh, because as you can see the drive belt goes through this hole here and uh, as it is I can't get it out with uh, out taking this plate off if I just take this screw off here and put that to one side and then I need to get this slightly larger screw here uh, out of the way and then I can lift this plate up and get the drive belt out. There is, a, there is a spring attached to this as well so I don't think I need to remove that. I should be good if I just remove this plate, this screw and lift the plate up that should be enough and just be careful not to dislodge, dislodge that spring. Uh, there's a washer on that screw, you need to make sure you keep that safe with the screw and now just try and lift this plate up there yeah, you see there's a slot there I can just ease the drive belt through and undo it from this pulley here and then there's another black plastic pulley under the circuit board you need to just ease it out from and then take it out from the motor yeah look it just, you know lost some of its springiness and as you look there's a kink uh, where the drive belt has been stuck around the the, uh, the motor pulley for probably a good number of years. So here we have a new, brand new fresh belt. Um, got this one off of eBay. Uh, you just do a search on eBay. There's lots of different types of belts. You just need to make sure you get the right belt for this drive. 
uh, and I think you also need to select the one that's for the appropriate country of manufacture so I just ease that belt back round the, uh, the two pulleys and the drive motor uh, and I just need to make sure it's not twisted in any way it's all freely rotating round, that is good yeah, it's back through the hole there as it should and that plate looks pretty much back in place so I'll just screw that back on quickly uh, I'll do the uh, longer smaller bolt first here I'll just help make sure it's lined up and just tighten that up nicely and then we get the the larger uh, but stubbier screw make sure it's still got the washer on it and I just need to ease that back in there just line that up in the hole just start to screw it in just to hold it in place and then tighten up just make sure that springs in place as well there that hasn't come uh, hasn't been dislodged during the process of changing the belt yeah that looks good just tighten that up and that's pretty much it for changing the main drive belt now I've got one other belt to do in a minute that's for the uh, for the counter but I just make sure that's all freely moving I haven't to uh, got that drive uh, that pulley there uh, stuck in anyway and while I got this off I'll take the whole unit out now and have a look at the capacitors uh, sometimes they they need changing but these look good so I'm not going to start mucking about taking circuit boards off and changing those uh, what I will do is give this uh, back part of the unit a bit of a clean it doesn't look like it needs much this I'm very fortunate that with the drive it looks pretty much new um, I don't think it, it wasn't sold as uh, new old stock but it uh, it was sold as uh, used but it, it doesn't look like it's seen much use to me uh, just give that a bit of a clean around I just do some isopropyl alcohol and a brush uh, to get any any dirt out of there and then just give it a going over again a bit more uh, isopropyl and a, uh, a paper towel to give that a nice white round make sure there's no marks on there uh, and that's going to leave it looking pretty much good as new for me on this, this drive. There we go, that's that should be enough. Okay, so I've got the unit back in uh, to the back side of the shell. I'm just going to give it a quick blast there with some air duster. Just make sure there's no dirt or grime in there. But I, fortunately for me on this one, there isn't too much. Uh, and then I can change the belt for the counter so again uh, this came as part of the, the pack that I got as a replacement pack of belts, two belts, one for the uh, the main drive belt and one for the counter uh, I just need to so when you're taking that off you just need to unhook it from under the eject uh, mechanism, the little eject arm there, just lift that up uh, and then we just do the replace it in the same way, it attaches to one of the drive shafts and then the other end goes around a pulley on the counter itself and I'll, I'll show you that in a second okay so that's it done just need to make sure it's moving around freely and that's a better angle there you can see uh, where it goes around the drive shaft and around the uh, the pulley on the bottom of the counter so and it just fits through that eject mechanism there as you can see that all the little eject arm that just lifts up okay so now I'm just going to get a q-tip and uh, some more alcohol give uh, things a little bit of a clean up here uh, I'm going to start with the roller here so uh, generally this would if you get a unit that's been well used this roller is usually caked up with uh, debris from uh, the, the, the tape, me uh, tape as it goes through so this roller feeds the tape through uh, it sort of moves up when you uh, press the play button and against the uh, the capstan uh, and what I'm going to do now is just roughen this surface up as well so it's got a good grip to it. And I'm just using a small piece of Brillo pad to do that. Just sort of gently rub it against the rubber surface and then rotate the roll around. And that should just roughen the surface up uh, so that it gets good grip on the tape as it's pulling it through. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to get some more, uh, some clean, a clean Q-tip, and put some more alcohol on that. 
and give it a, another wipe over. Make sure everything's really clean. As you see, there's not too much, well, there's nothing really coming off of this. So that, that either this unit has been very well serviced or it's, it's, it's not been used very much. And I can see that it just doesn't look like there's much dirt in there at all. So I th it all looks pretty fresh and new. So I've been uh, pretty lucky with this purchase. It's, it's a good find. So I'm pleased with it. Uh, I'm just going to do the, uh, the keys, uh, make sure they're clean. Again, get another Q-tip, a bit more alcohol on there, and just give the keys, top of the keys, they are a little bit dirty, so I'll just give those a clean. Get all that, any sort of residue off of there. Okay, so the next job I need to do is to start cleaning uh, the heads. So we'll start uh, with this white head here, that's the raised head. And then with the metal head there, that's the read right head. But I'll start with the uh, the plastic white, the white plastic uh, raised head. Again, these need probably cleaning every sort of ten to twenty hours of use usually. Uh, whilst I've got the the unit apart, I'll give these gives me an opportunity to give them a really good thorough clean. Now give the uh, read right head. A good clean. If you see there on the reed right head, it's got a couple of screws on it. Uh, these are the azimuth alignment screw, or one of them is the azimuth alignment screw that sort of adjusts the angle uh, the head goes against the tape. And I think uh, as part of this service, we're also going to have a look at that in a bit on how you can adjust that. Okay, so that's all nice and clean there. And just while I've got the front of the unit off, I'm going to take the opportunity to give that a clean out as well it's, it looks you know pretty clean but we'll just uh, spray a bit more alcohol around on that and give it a good, good going over the brush and a paper towel just drying all off there make sure we've got any last bits of dirt out and again do the front of the unit uh, with a paper towel nice and clean. Uh, I think by the time I finish this the unit's going to look as good as new. Okay so I've got the mechanism back into the front of the case, I just need to put the back back on now. Uh, I just need to make sure that, that the way the cable goes through with that rubber grommet uh, that that's all not being pinched as in, in the hole as it should be. Uh, put my four screws back in and tighten those up and uh, certainly the cleaning part of the, the service is then done. Just tighten those four screws up. Don't, I don't need to over tighten those because obviously you risk cracking the case. So just do them up so they're sort of reasonably tight but not too tight. And that's the last one there and we should then be done. Okay, so that's the uh, the unit all nicely cleaned uh, inside and out. Uh, uh, drive belt changed, so we should now be uh, go back and try it again, see how we get on with loading. So pop the tape in, and let's try again. Okay, so I just check the fast forward. That is now perfectly. Uh, as it should be, so that just shows that the drive belt, uh, even though it didn't look too too bad, it definitely needed changing. And reverse, uh, that was working fine before, but it's it's working good still. So uh, pleased with that. Definitely definitely worth changing that drive belt. Okay, time to see whether that has made a difference. Let's try loading uh, cheese once again. See what we get. Press play.
Okay, so this time we haven't got the corruption, so that looks good, fingers crossed. Uh, I know this is a long program to load though, so uh, let's see how we get on with it. Uh, let's leave it running, and uh, fingers crossed. Okay, so it's been going for a while now, so it's looking good. Uh, okay, so that didn't work. Um, definitely better result than we got last time. Uh, so what I need to do now is check the alignment of the heads, and I've got a program that does that. And I'll leave a link to that in the description uh, for this episode below. But what that does, uh, once we start that going, uh, we get we should get three bars at the bottom of the screen here. And what I need to do is, is just go through this hole. So if you press play on the tape and put a little screwdriver through this hole, you should be able to feel you get through to that uh, screw uh, that I pointed out earlier on. And that allows you to adjust the head. And this program uh, will show me, it'll give me a signal as I'm playing the tape. And I can then use that to line the head up. So let's uh, see what we get. So getting one uh, line at the moment. That looks nice and central in that. Uh, bar so that looks all right but then you see as it starts going there they are sort of out of alignment so what I really need to get is those three uh, those three sets of lines all nice and sharp and in the middle of those uh, like tubes you see as I'm moving the head they're going from left to right and what I really need is to get those centered so just move them over that looks pretty good. So let's see how we get on with that. So once again, let's load up uh, our tape and rewind it. And type load cheese. And press play on tape. And we'll see how we get on with that. As I say, this is uh, this is quite a long program to load, so we'll we'll cut back to it in a minute. And it's still going, looking good. So it's found cheese. That's good. Okay, so it's been going for quite a while now, so I'm hopeful. And there we are, ready. So let's just type uh, SYS4096. Uh, we need to start this program, not run. And there we go, success. Now, the reason the uh, pointer just zooms across the screen there is because I don't actually have a mouse attached at the moment. Uh, but that's something I'm going to take a look at in another episode. Well, that's it for this episode of Retro Now. If you enjoyed it, then why not let me know by liking it with a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel or you haven't done so already, then please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to set notifications so that you'll be notified when I upload new content to the channel. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And wherever you are, stay safe, keep well, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Retro Now.